What's up, everybody? I've been to do this video for a while now, and I've done videos like it before, but I haven't done videos like this in this kind of depth. And it's gonna be rather a rather long video, so yeah, get your popcorn ready. All right, I'm gonna talk about the game. Okay, I'm gonna talk about, like the title says, this is all about uh, the pickup ism, the PUA community. Okay, which has long since been, we'll say, uh, say dismantled. I don't know. There, there are lots of, uh, there are lots of adjectives to describe exactly how the pickup industry has broken down since I discovered it back a decade ago. Okay, and this is not to say that it's like the worst thing ever. It's not to say that it's a it's it's not a scam. I mean, I mean, you know, if you break it down, everything is a scam. I mean, like we all don't get what we want. You know what I mean? Like that that's up to what you want and what you expect and what you aspire to get from whatever you buy. You know what I mean? I mean, if your expectations are that high, then pretty much everything can be a scam. You know what I mean? But no, this is going to be a social history of the pickup community. Uh, where it was, where it's been, where it's going, in my opinion, in my um, estimation, where it's going to be, where it's going to wind up, and and just my, I guess my social commentary on that kind of community at large, okay? Because there's some very good things about it, and there's some really shitty things about it, and I feel like I've been in the community of it, you know, for, I was in it for, you know, we'll say, we'll say about up until like 2014, so like the eight years. Nowadays, not so much. Nowadays, I've found other methods for me to be satisfied with my love life and with my sex life to where I don't need to consult the advice of a pickup guy, all right? And, yeah, so I'm going to be going over that. Okay. First thing I want to talk about. I want to talk about the social history of the pickup community. Okay. Where it originated, how it developed, and where it's going to be developing. All right. Okay. Now, my very first encounters with the pickup community was been reading this book, The Game. He has a sequel of it called The Truth. Which, I don't know, it's probably a different book because Neil Strauss is a really good uh, creative nonfiction writer. It's kind of what I call it. It's kind of the genre that he has, that he that he writes. Very similar to what I do. Uh, I haven't really released any writing or published anything yet because, I don't know, I'm just really... I'm, I'm still at the phase where I am self-conscious about my writing, even though it's been complimented by a lot of individuals, but still, I just feel like I shouldn't be doing that yet. I'm not perfect at it, you know what I mean? And I want to be perfect at something like a craft, like art, in my example, writing. Uh, this way, I know exactly how to improve and how to do things better, you know? But that's besides the point. So he wrote that book. It is... Equal parts an expose and equal parts a almost like a uh, like an autobiographical like like a piece of a memoir kind of deal that he wrote. In it, he ex the first one the first pickup guy that he encounters is a man named Mystery. Uh, but his real name is like Eric von Marco something. I don't know. It's something crazy like that. And this is a guy who really tall guy, six foot like six foot ten. You know, he does lots of, he really skinny, you know what I mean, like, kind of, kind of lanky and weird looking, and he developed a way to do what he likes to do, which is do magic stuff, and he developed social skills, and he kind of, what he did was he went into the cities of Toronto, Canada, that's where he was from, that's where Mystery is from, Neil Strauss is from uh, Los Angeles, and what Mystery did, he was just, he would just kind of walk around and just start conversations with people, 
and he would see what worked, what didn't work. He kind of made a checklist and stuff like that. I did that back in the day as well. I did that about nine years ago when I really wanted to get the process of socializing down because, well, I'll talk about that later. But anyways, yeah, so that's what he did. And so Strauss kind of recruits him as a dating coach. And then Strauss becomes a dating coach in the book. All right. Other people that Strauss mentions is a guy named, there's a guy named Ross Jeffries who says that, hey, man, if you learn like hypnosis, then you can, you know, you can, I guess, hypnotize women into uh, agreeing to go out with you or something like that. Uh, and that became its own little section of pickup ism. Uh, there's a, there's some other figures that he encounters. David D'Angelo, this guy who just says, "Hey man, like all you gotta do is just be a smart ass towards women, and you'll get them, and also work on yourself." In fact, about five or so years ago, I, I there was a DVD of uh, David D'Angelo that was leaked onto YouTube, and it kind of lists like seventy five things that guys should do. In order to improve their sex lives. And a lot of those were just really like, yo, work on yourself. You know what I mean? Uh, make sure you're make sure you're happy. Make sure you are not depressed. Make sure you are make sure you look your best all the time. Make sure you are trying to get with women who are at your level when it comes to looks, money, or status. That kind of stuff. And then and then like and then do the game stuff. Then do the you know, treat them like they're one of your bros and you know, be a smart ass towards them instead of like white knighting them to death and stuff like that. Or if you want to white knight them, at least have it come from that place where it is authentic and you're not just trying to white knight a woman in the bed with you. You know what I mean? And he was coming, it was kind of, he was coming up with that in the mid 2000s. All right. And it's been, it was pretty much streamlined from the mid 2000s up into the late 2000s. And then you get to the 2010s. And. There are three groups that I want to bring up that have seen a big emergence in the pickup community in the 2010s. All right. The first is Real Social Dynamics. Uh, about four years ago, I went to a one of their free tours. It's where you go to one of their lectures. They do like little lectures and you pay them like 20 bucks. And you get to sit on on these like three, four, five hour lectures. And it was really fun to watch. It was great. It was a great experience. If you just want to listen to, you know, people talk about, you know, the opposite sex and life, then you go to one of these lectures. It's fine. It's only 20 bucks, whatever. You get what you pay for. You know, you get to, you get to sit, you get to sit down and watch guys who have made a living off of being dating coaches talk about their experiences and stuff like that. And it's really cool. And then you got the other two groups. And well, I mean, I mean, other things that RSD does are their boot camps where you pay them like several thousands of dollars and you they actually physically coach you through you know, approaching, inviting and uh, getting the contact info of, of, of members of the opposite sex that you are attracted to, that kind of stuff. Or even or I don't know if they do with the same sex. I have no idea, but whatever. And then they have a thing called the hot seat where you watch them. uh where you watch them go to places and stuff like that, and you watch them, and you watch them interact and stuff like that. And there's been some speculation saying that it's staged. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I'm not going to be the authority on that. And that costs a couple hundred bucks and stuff like that. And then you got the other two groups. And I was going to do a video where it's like the five worst and the five best, but there's not really that many pickup groups that are really like too popular. But there are two that I keep, like, hearing about. Uh, the first is Manhood Academy and Good Looking Loser, okay? I don't, know much, I don't know much about these two. All right, the only thing I've heard about are, like, bad things. Is that manhood, the people on Manhood Academy are, like, they're just woman haters. And they, like, they talk about what Elliot Roger did and they kind of say that it's a woman's fault for not... Uh, for like lying to 
dudes who want to hook up with them. You know what I mean? Uh, Good Looking Loser is more like a site where it's like, I don't know, I've heard a lot of racist stuff go on there, but that's besides the point. And then the more I see, the more stuff I watch on RSD, uh, the more stuff I encounter online with pickupism in ge- at large in general, I'm seeing a, I'm seeing a, 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 a disdain a dislike for women that I did not encounter a decade ago. Uh, I didn't even encounter it five years ago. When I was just, well, let's see, a decade ago, I wasn't even online. It was I didn't even talk about that stuff online. I think I probably started that around maybe 2008 with, uh, with Love Systems, which I, I haven't heard of anything from them in a long time. So, yeah. But even then, I didn't, like, see anything about how, oh, you know, women have too many rights, da 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 I didn't start seeing that until maybe, like, I don't know, 2012, 2013-ish. And to me, it's kind of worrisome, because, now look, like, I'm no, I'm no proponent for women's empowerment, okay? I'm not one of these, like, white knight feminist guys who's like, yeah, man, a PUAism is objectifying women. No, I'm nothing like that. Okay, I'm nothing like that at all. You know what I mean? I feel like I don't even like kind of that doesn't even register me. You know what I mean? Like if I act friendly and polite, I'm gonna do that towards anybody who I feel deserves to be. You know what I mean? I'm not like I'm not one of these guys who draws distinctions on how I should act, uh, depending dependent on what gender a person is. I've never been that way, ever. I really haven't. So, yeah. But a lot of these new pickup uh, uh, networks, communities, whatever the fuck you want to call them, a lot of them, it's like, yeah, it's, they, a lot of them preach, you know, hatred for women. And I like, I, I dislike that as much as, as channels like Feminist Frequency, who, They made a video called, like, 31 Ways or 31 Apologies that Men Need to Make to Women or something like that. And to me, that's just fighting fire with fire. You know what I mean? And I'm not, I mean, like, fighting fire with fire, if I'm not involved in it, I think is really funny. But when it affects me, that's different. I don't like doing that. You know what I mean? Absolutely not. And I truly believe that here's what's what's going to happen with with PUA-ism. It's just gonna turn into... It's gonna turn into a hate group. I hate to say... I I really don't like saying that. But it's gonna eventually, in five or so years, by 2020, you know, I don't know what RSD is gonna be doing, but they're probably gonna be... They're probably gonna be a lot less popular. The places like Manhood Academy and Good Looking Loser are gonna be more popular because, because they're gonna be like, oh... Are you sick of evil women, like, putting you in the friend zone? Well, it's not your fault. It's theirs. Join our agenda. You know what I mean? Like, that's gonna, you know what I mean? And, and it's and it's a sad state of affairs, okay? So, as of this moment on, you know, I've kind of turned back. Well, as of this moment, two years ago, which is, I wanted to do this video, like, two years ago, but I just did not know how to really do it. Didn't have that, I don't know, I just... Didn't feel like doing it. But yeah, like, I'm I'm over it. You know what I mean? I don't... I don't associate myself with that anymore. And it's not because I didn't get anything out of it. I got plenty... I got a lot out of it, okay? I want to go through what... I want to go through the evolution of my... Of my love life and my dating life. Just to, just to tell you exactly how much I've grown. Over the last, uh, we'll say, uh, 20 years of my life. You don't start thinking of that shit when you, until you're, like, in your adolescence. You know what I mean? That's why I hate when people, like, say, like, online. They go, like, yeah, man. Or, like, guys, like, uh, who are, like, virgins and they're my age. They go, yeah, man. I've lived 34 years old and I've never had sex. And I go, well, were you really thinking about sex when you were in your single digits? Were you thinking about it when you first hit the double digits? You know, when did you really start thinking about it? Probably when you were, like, in junior high or maybe in elementary school, like, 
right before or grade school when I call it, or maybe in grade school, like the, the like the in the uh, home stretch of, of grade school, definitely in high school and college for sure. And after that, but you know, when people say that they've been their whole lives a virgin, I go, no, you haven't. You've been a virgin for like a decade because that's when you started thinking about sex was in your adolescence. You didn't think about when you were a kid. Okay. And if you did, then, well, okay. Then you grew up fucking vast. I mean, I kind of thought about when I was a little kid, but I had a, I had a duality, you know what I mean? And a lot of the guys who have that uh, pickup mentality, they just kind of view, they have this they have this worldview that, you know, a man is judged by their lay count and how attractive the, and how attractive their girlfriend or uh, fuck buddy or whatever, or their dates are, you know what I mean? And while that holds some water, there is more to it than that, okay? So anyways. So, pretty much up until I was 23 years old, I was almost completely dateless, okay? Absolutely nothing. And there were a lot of reasons for that, okay? I've looked in through my, I've looked back on my life and I've determined that, that there were like maybe four reasons why I didn't have the dating life that I really should have had when I was a teenager, okay? One, I was lazy as fuck, Okay? I was late. I've had this lazy, nihilistic attitude towards life ever since my parents divorced. Because when my parents divorced, I said, oh shit. Well, and the first thing I thought it was about was relationships. I was like 15 years old. And I said to myself, well, if I start dating a chick, and if that's going to be the end result of divorce, then why even bother? I had this like, all right, there's a group called Men Going Their Own Way, right? And they're like, yeah, man shouldn't you shouldn't interact with women ever and because unless they unless they give you what you owe unless they give you what they owe you which is sex you know what i mean like and they say like yeah man i'm not gonna do any dating at all because i'm free myself you know they take they say that they've taken the red pill and they've unplugged from the matrix and why the fuck you why, why you want to make references to that trash heap of a movie i i have no idea in my opinion, The Matrix is one of the most overrated movies of all fucking time. That's a different story for a different day. But, you know, I was one of those people, you know, 15 years before it was even a thing on the internet. You know what I mean? And then I realized that wasn't right, you know? And But here's this, the second reason why I was dateless until 23. I had a crush. I had a crush on this... On this cheerleader, you know, I kind of fantasized about the life we had together. I was, I was, uh, I was blinded by Disney, is what I say, because yeah, that's a lot of uh, media. You know, it's not just Disney; it's rom com. Actually, Disney's probably the most innocent of them all because a lot of Disney movies are based on like some really dark things, really dark myths and true stories. But we'll say like uh the, you know the media you know what I mean you know the the fa you know like I watched uh, Boy Meets World back then you know what I mean and you know Cory and Topanga I go yeah man you know I'm gonna find my Topanga you know what I mean oh and I'm gonna burp like crazy <laughs> but yeah so that was that was me you know I had there was this cheerleader who ironically I don't know if that's the correct word usage of that but whatever who who, uh, coincidentally, coincidentally, looked like Topanga from Boy Meets World, and I'm like, oh my god, this girl, girl of my dreams, so, you know, like, so I was just fixated on her, and there were a lot of other girls in high school who wanted to get with me, but I'm like, no, 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 you're not the cheerleader, so, no. Third reason, my dad didn't want me to date anybody who wasn't Jewish, like, the, the very first thing out of his mouth. Like, I'd say, hey, man, I'd say to him, hey, man, like, there's this chick who's, like, really attracted to me. Should I ask her out? The very first thing out of his mouth would be, is she Jewish? And i go, no. And he's like, well, you can't go out with her. It's fucking retarded. And 
you know, the cheerleader that I talked about a few minutes ago, you know, he went through that whole thing anyways. And I said, oh, I'm going to go out with her anyways. He's like, you're not going to succeed. You know what I mean? And the final reason, the final reason was because I had no, I knew how to socialize. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know the social mistakes I was making. Or if I did know, I was ignoring them. That, that, that was usually more of the case. But I had no idea how to invite. I had no idea how to ask a chick out. Nowadays, it's easy. Nowadays, I go, yo, what are you doing at this time? Let's go do this activity. They say, cool, then, then we're good. If they don't say cool, well, then whatever. But I had no idea how to do that. I had no idea how to make a move. I had no idea how to uh, be physical with a girl. I had no idea. I didn't even know how to give a girl a hug. You know, you just kind of just, you know, when I give chicks hugs, I just kind of spread my arms out and kind of do this little thing. And they walk into me, I put my arms around them, and there you go. I can't believe I just broke down a fucking hug. <laughs> but I didn't know how to do that back then. I didn't know how to make out with a girl. I didn't know how to kiss one. I had no idea on how to do that. And the first three things... Those are just situational. Those are just, you know, me being lazy. That was just me not being motivated to do things. Uh, the crush, you know, that was just something that I had to get over. The third thing was very much situational. And funny enough, as soon as I moved out of my, with my, of my dad's place, that's when he said, how come you haven't gotten laid yet? And I go, well, you just want me to have, you just want me to hook up with Jewish girls. He's like, that was then. You can do whatever you want now. Just protect yourself. I go, well, why didn't you say it to me five years ago? <laughs> so I had to do something. I had to address my datelessness. I had to. And there would have been no other way. Okay? A lot of people talk about, hey, man, well, prostitution should be legal. Let me tell you something. Prostitution ain't going to solve connection issues, right? That sounds weird. It sounds real technical. It, 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 the prostitution is not going to solve intimacy issues, okay? You're not going to be able to take a prostitute with to your place and give her, you know, what, three, four hundred dollars. I don't know how much it costs. And... And do what I call tell a story of intimacy. You know what I mean? You're not going to be able to do that with a prostitute. You you, you can't. Okay? You, you That's not going to happen. All right? Because there's no connection. Because she sees you as a client and you see her as a instrument. Okay? Now, is it wrong? Absolutely not. Look, if you're dry and you feel like you don't want to take time and effort to get chicks who are attracted to you, you know, completely attracted to you to, to the point where they are inviting you to places or where, you, where, or where you can invite them places easily and where you can have sex with them as much as you want, whenever you want, however you want. You know, if you don't want to go through all that nonsense, but you still have buddies, you still have uh, people you hang out with on, you know, daily, weekly, whatever basis then that's cool. Or maybe you're just some of these, one of these introvert guys who's just like, oh, I just want to be alone all the time and I really want just some companionship just maybe once a week, once a month, just to, you know, make sure I'm not crazy. That's a completely different story. Okay? That's totally different from what I'm talking about. All right? What I'm talking about is developing love life. You cannot do that with a worker. You can't. It, it, there's no way you can develop a sex life with workers to some extent. But they will try out, you know, this new position you want to do, this new technique you've been trying to work on, that kind of stuff. You can, you can practice sex with a worker, but you cannot practice intimacy with one, okay? Now, I'm going to get a lot of people saying, yo, man, well, that's not true, da da da, -da. You know, oh, you could do that too with prostitutes. I go, fine, you know, just take your your fantasy as your fantasy. 
you know, we all have our own bullshit that we believe in. You know what I mean? Maybe mine is, I don't know, mine makes sense to me. Yours could make sense to you. That's cool. But yes, like I said, I needed to find a way to address my datelessness, datelessness because I was approaching an age where society kind of like expects you to have arrived at a certain point in your development of love life and sex life. You know what I mean? Which, neither of which I have even begun to develop at 23. You know what I mean? I was still had the dumbass crush. Uh, I still was really lazy and didn't you know, figure out ways how to invite chicks to hang out with me or to make moves on them. And it's funny because that, 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 I paid for that. I mean, I, I, mean, I don't mean paid for that. I mean, like, I, uh, I was affected by that. You know what I mean? Because there were several times where I would go out as a young 21-year-old or 22-year-old I'd go out, some chick would be hitting on me, I'd be hitting on her, and she would make a move on me, but I did not, you know, I had no idea how to, you know, uh, what they call in the pickup uh, industry, pull, you know what I mean? I had no idea how to make a move to where me and her could be intimate, you know what I mean? I had no idea how to get her contact info and, you know, make sure that we saw each other again, you know what I mean? Nowadays... I can do that almost systematically, you know what I mean? I can do it like it's a science now, you know what I mean? All I gotta do is just get out there just a little bit, and I'm good, you know what I mean? But back then, I was fucking hopeless, all right? And so that's gonna be transition into how pick up people help others, okay? And this is very similar to my boy Sonny, a guy named, a guy named Sonny Arvado. He's got a little website, Strength by Sunny. It's good shit. He's in uh, his uh, channel and his uh, website are in the video description. I don't, I don't know, I'm not as established enough to have a similar website. I want to be like an authority on it before I do that. You know what I mean? But I appreciate his uh, efforts into having, into being a coach because. It's pretty legit, because when I was his age, I was still like, oh, you man, let's just take drugs. <laughs> and, like, let's take drugs and not care about anything. I don't care about anything, but I don't do the drugs anymore. <laughs> but, yeah, so, you know, it's very similar to what he writes. And, look, pickupism is very, it's, it's useful in a lot of ways, okay? Let's not, let's not bullshit here, Okay. There's good and bad things about everything, okay? Even, like, like I hate when people go, like, oh, like, on my Facebook, they go, oh, man, but Bernie Sanders is perfect, and Donald Trump is pure evil. And I go, like, how do you know that? You don't know that. So don't say that shit. Because it's not true. No one's perfect, and no one's perfectly evil. No one's perfectly bad, okay? All right, here's what people can learn from pickupism. They can learn how to get their name out, how to spam approach. They can learn how to become less butthurt about rejection. You know, PUAs preach that. They say, hey, man, don't take yourself seriously when you ask chicks out. They're not shooting you down. They're shooting your technique or lack thereof down. So work on your technique. All right. They teach you how to invite. They teach you how to make moves. And they teach you how to invite without being, you know, some weak, having some weak, stupid invitation. Like, let's go out sometime. Really shitty way to ask a chick out. Now, they teach you how to make moves without getting a rape charge. Okay? Now, there's this big thing in gender discussion. You know, oh, there's more rape being reported than ever. Or there's less rape being reported, but there's, it's still around. And we live in a rape culture and that kind of stuff. And you know what? This is my opinion. From someone who has dated women who have been assaulted. Assaulted. From someone who has been assaulted. 
from someone who has has buddies who have been assaulted by fucking family members. The sexual assault thing, it, it's not amongst strangers, okay? It's amongst people who are known, right? I went out with a chick once who, like, her uncle, like, made her have sex with him, okay? The same with one of my close buddies. For me, it was a childhood friend who just got wasted, and he was a batshit insane, and he threatened me with violence. You know, these are not the stories that you'll hear. The stories that you'll hear are just from guys who, they get drunk, they get horny, they walk up to other chicks who are drunk but maybe not horny, and it finds out the chick wasn't horny but just didn't want to didn't want to fight the dude off. And so the dude has sex with her because, oh, she's drunk. She's not going to remember it. And there you go. Now, is that right? Is that wrong? I'm not here to say that that's right or wrong. Okay? I'm not. In my opinion, it's stupid. All right? So I guess I, I, guess I think it's wrong. Unless both of y'all are drunk and horny, then both of y'all fucking drunk and horny. And they, just have, they just have really bad sex. Okay? That's happened to me, too. <laughs> but anyways. But yeah, so... That's what pickupism can kind of teach you. Is that, hey man, if you are attracted to a chick, and you think she's attracted to you, you gotta let, make her... You gotta find that out, and then tell... And then, then... They don't talk about sex being a story of intimacy, but I do. That's only because... I enjoy it. <laughs> to me, it's fun. It's not a job. Okay, but PUA is like the thing of it as a job, and I'm gonna get to that later. Well, you know, but they do teach you how to make moves, and you know, start and begin the story of intimacy that sex should be. Okay, and they also they also talk about, hey man, you should improve your look, you should, you should improve uh, your social skills, you should improve your your ice breaking skills. You should improve your, uh, your, 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 your flirting skills with, with chicks, and so on and so forth. You know what I mean? However, these are the bad things about it, okay? One, it's a collectivist mentality, okay? Now, I'm going to go into some social science here, okay? What is collectivist mentality? This is why feminism never fucking works. It's why men's rights is a bunch of bullshit. It's why, it's why the it's why the red pill thing, the whole men going their own way thing, is is retarded. Okay, it's why religion sucks. It's why atheism now sucks, and it's why, and it's why politics are just a, are just a, a a plot to make sure that other people are kept in line and oppressed at all costs. Collective action, pickupism is a collective. Action. It wants you to join them. It doesn't want you to just do you and take what they give and go ahead and use it as you wish. No. They're saying, come join us. Just like the Bad Religion song. If any of you out there are listening to Bad Religion or have listened to Bad Religion. Alright. George Carlin says it way better than I can and... I'll kind of, uh, I guess I'll kind of paraphrase what he says. And what, what George Carlin says is that, is that, you know, special, is that any kind of group that has some kind of agenda, they're going to seek to control your language. They're going to seek to tell you things that you, things that you ought to be saying. That's what religion does. That's what PUAism does. And feminism and and men's rights, all of them have that same kind of dialogue in their actions. Is that they know what is best for others, and because I'm not collective, because I'm an individual, I'm an individualist thinker. I don't like the group mentality. That's why pick up not for me anymore. Because and this goes beyond cult and and then you. You call it cult mentality. Cult is different. Cult is cult gets violent. Okay, it, the, the pickup ism isn't violent. Okay, now some feminists think that they're sexually violent, but that's 
you know, that's their opinion. I mean, they, 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 I mean, you can approach a feminist and they'll think that you're being like, a, a, and that you'll, they'll think that you're harassing them, you know, that kind of stuff. And how do you prevent that? Oh, well, so you don't hit on any feminists. The easiest spot. Now, they're not good or bad, they're just not for me. It's like a soft frog in the house. Anyways. So, yeah. Second thing. And once again, this is going into uh, a, a social uh, gender, uh, I don't know, social issues regarding gender, is that they enforce toxic masculinity. Now, what is toxic masculinity? All right, I've taken a class on feminism before, okay? So I know about this shit, okay? Toxic masculinity is pretty much that... It, it's a thing that... It's a thing that uh, the, the male psyche kind of... Kind of preaches to other males, okay? And now females... And now, and now, and now chicks have done this too. So now it's both sexes doing it, okay? And this narrative is that, look, a real man is defined by his lay count. It's defined by, uh, you know, how much weight he can lift. And it's, it's defined, and he's defined by, uh, uh, you know, how attractive the women he slip, he sleeps with are and stuff like that. Now, and, and uh, you know, and how, uh, and how much money he makes and stuff like that is completely bogus. Okay. It's completely bogus and as the name entails, toxic, <laughs> all right? There's a speaker called Karen Strawhan or something like that. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to look her up, and I'm going to also post uh, a link to her video in the description talking way more about it than I just paraphrased, all right? But, yeah, pick up pick upism followers love to preach that. Hey, man. You know, if your weight count isn't high enough, then you're not a man, dude. You know, they go, oh, well, you only get with big girls. Well, uh, it, anyone can do that, man. It, meanwhile, you don't even see them with chicks at all. <laughs> you know, see them with chicks, they don't, like, it, 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 they don't, like, I, I've hung out with these guys. And, like, they're the biggest dorks ever. And I'm this is coming from a dork, okay? This is coming from a dork who is naturally introverted, and I had to develop into an extrovert, meaning I have, like, introverted, like, uh, introverted habits. Like, I like chilling by myself, you know? You don't really see me around with people because I can only deal with them in short bursts, that kind of stuff. But at least I know who the fuck I am, instead of using a narrative to define it. That's what toxic masculinity is. And pickupism. It's just another, it's just another, uh, forgetting the goddamn word. There's another filter of it, okay? And let me tell you, there's a lot of things that are filters of it. it the religion, um, even feminism also does it, and pickupism as well. Let's see what else. Uh, school, anything, anything popular. Anything popular and anything that is a, a collectivist action does that. Okay. I don't mean to get on my individual soapbox, but what the fuck? May as well. Alright, what else? Also, their techniques are finite. Okay? Now, maybe this has been explored a little bit over the years, but back in the day when I first read the game, you know, there was only one way to interact with chicks, and that is to never uh, support them. And that is to never say anything good about them. It's to never say anything uh, that other people have said, and that kind of stuff. Total bullshit. Okay, look. If you want to be, if you want to be that nice guy, trademark kind of guy, then by God, do it. But by God, be real about it. You know, like if you're gonna be, if you're gonna like compliment a chick, don't just compliment her because you feel like that's the right thing to do. Compliment her because you legitimately like what you see. But but PUAism, that's not enough. 
for the PUAs. The PUAs are like, yo, man, you need to take her down a few pegs because she already has white knights, like, at her all the damn time. And like us, and like many other groups who are collective, who are collectivists, that is only half true. Okay, look, look. Let's say you have a girlfriend, okay, and you've been dating her for a while. Are you really gonna, are you really gonna bust her chops about some new dress that she bought, even though you two have already fucked, you've already had sex, you've already, you know, been on a few dates, you've already met the parents and shit like that. Are you really going to be like, well, you know, duh, 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 whatever the fuck, uh, whatever, whatever the hell you know, PUAs do nowadays to, to, to lower her value, which by the way, it comes from a place of low value because you're trying to lower the chick's value to your level. Never understood that. So, you know. There's nothing wrong with being friendly, polite, mature, and cool. There's absolutely, and I've always had that problem with PUAism, okay? Look, I've read the theory. I've read the fucking theories. I own, okay, Mystery wrote a book about what he teaches called The Mystery Method. He published it a couple years after the game. I bought that book. I bought it when it was first printed, all right? And in the book, he says, hey, man, you know, don't neg so much if you feel like the chick has won you over. If you feel like the chick has won you over in some capacity, then just, by God, like, treat her like a fucking human being. But now modern-day PUAs are like, no, nah, man. No, nah, man, chicks chicks owe guys. And shit like that. A lot of women hating. Which is fighting fire with fire because a lot of feminism is now man-hating. And that's the final thing about it. It's become a social action movement. It, it's become like the reverse of feminism. Okay? Like, here, like, all right, I don't have a problem with feminism at all. Okay? I really don't. I don't have a problem with old school feminism. Okay? Like, there's a woman I read about. I oh, forget her name. But whatever. She wrote a thing. She wrote a, uh, she wrote, the, the, we had to read an excerpt uh, from her book, uh, pretty much arguing that, hey man, like, gender is something we create, you know what I mean? It's something we, it's something we assign, it's something that a group with intentions and agenda assigns to people, okay? She doesn't talk about how men are evil and they're raping women worldwide, you know? <laughs> she She's not saying that. She's not doing what Anita Sarkeesian does, and she's like, yeah, man, you know, but men have completely taken over society, and we need to put an end to it. No, this woman is more like, just and all the, a few years younger than my mom, okay? My mom probably fucking knows her, all right? It's the same with that Karen Strohan woman that I was talking about a few minutes ago, about toxic masculinity. Now, this woman has no agenda. She doesn't have some grand, like, save the world thing that, that she wants to, that she wants to unveil to the world so we can save the world from the harmful ill of, of, of men. You know, no. She just says, hey man, gender is something that society gives us. And it may even transcend the, the gender that our biology gives us. You know what I mean? And I found it to be a very interesting read. You know, it's it's that feminism that I'm that I am a fan of. You know, I'm a fan of of a woman being able to get an abortion as long as it's like not within the third trimester or some crazy shit like that. Uh, you know, I want birth control to be around and and available to everybody. You know, like I. I want contraception to be available to everybody. This way we don't overpopulate the world with freaking kids who we can't raise and shit like that. You know, I want chicks to have the same kind of, uh, the same kind of opportunities that men have. Do I believe there's a pay gap? Absolutely not. In fact, I feel like it's a, it's, I feel like it's the reverse, but that's just another 
uh, that's just another instrument that feminists use to control the environment, okay? And then men's rights activists are no better, all right? And now, and see, different than a decade ago, PUAism has now joined that, has now joined that club, has now joined that collective. When it used to be an individualist thing, it used to be, it used to be individual uh, voluntary voluntarism. Okay, it used to be group voluntarism. Hey man, if you want to learn about how to develop your love life and how to make things better for your love life, and how to develop your sex life even better than it is now, then hey man, listen to what we have to say. You know, spread it if you want, but if you don't, then don't worry about it. It's cool. Nowadays, it's like, it's like, oh, women have more choice in sex than ever, and now you need to be the best man for them. And to do that, you need to join us. You know, it was not like that a decade ago, okay? All right. Here's some other things. Here's some things that pickupism completely avoids. This is going to end the video. All right. They don't preach about how you have to be financially stable in order to even date nowadays, okay? Why is that? I just mentioned a few seconds ago that the pay gap does not favor men, it favors women, okay? Why is that? Because more men live with their folks than women. My age, okay? Me, 1836. Nearly 40%, 40, 40, one, one, 4 in 10 of people my age live with their folks. With, with, with chicks, with females, 18 to 36, it's, every, it's 3 in 10. What does that say? Does it say that all oh, more men are dropping out of society? I don't know about that. Okay. I think that I think that women are way, are way more hireable than men because you know we still have this notion that we have to that, that that we have to save the women you know what I mean that we have to that we have to put them on pedestals you know that we have to give them what they want even if they take a job and they they're really bad at it when a guy would be better or at least slightly less shitty so there you go. But that notwithstanding, PUAism is like, yo, man, you don't need, you, you can be, you stay at your parents' place, just go to the club and, and spam approach drunk girls. And then have sex with said drunk girls. You know, no passion, no connection, no, no intimacy, no, no intimacy story being told. Just, you know, just, just go there, man. Just, just, just. You know, get her from get her from behind, pump her a few for a few strokes, doggy style, and you're good. And then you're good, bro. You you've got you 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 got on the board. So dumb. That's the second thing they ignore. They 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 ignore it's systematically how to be good in the bedroom, how to be a good, how, how to have sex with a woman properly, and how to please her. And how to have her please you, just like you pleased her. This way you tell the story of intimacy that is sex. Look, I've had, like, I've had, I've had sloppy drunken sex like twice in my life, okay? The first time it was with this other chick who was just equally as drunk, but we were still kind of attracted to each other, so it was there. And you know what? It was kind of lame, because I had whiskey dick, she smelled like shit. Or she didn't smell that great, you know, like, and it was kind of weird getting into positions and stuff like that. Her bed was crowded. It had all kinds of crap on it. Like, it had her laptop, and it had, like, one of her, a cage for, like, one of her pets on the damn bed. And, like, she had, like, two more animals in the room. And it was just, like, really weird, okay? And, you know, that was my little, little hookup at a party, yay. You know, that was my little hookup at a party experience. All right. The second time was with a woman who I was kind of casually seeing for sex. And the first time we had sex with her, you know, it was 
kind of fun because we were both sober and we both liked each other, whatever. And the second time was like, or, or the one time where we both hammered, you know, it's the same thing. Like I had whiskey dick. She was like, I don't know. She didn't, it was just, ugh, it just didn't, it didn't work out. So there was no connection. There was no teasing. There was no foreplay. There were no, there was no things that make sex what it is. You know, like a really rewarding in experience of intimacy. Okay. PUAism ignores that. They just say, oh, just get laid. Just get laid. It's going to solve all your problems. That's the third thing that they that they both push and it's something that they and, and it's something that they ignore. I'm going to say what they push first. They preach that, hey man, you know, lay count is everything. If you don't have a high lay count, then you're not cool, you know? And the kalalari, or I don't know if I'm using that word or saying it right, of that is, is that you know, sex isn't everything. You can go months without sex. I wouldn't suggest it, and it would take it takes a lot of discipline. You need to be doing a lot of things, you know, you have to have passions and hobbies and shit on the side in order to do that. But look, it is possible, okay? A lot of people who, you know, are just like so ingrained in toxic masculinity, they like to say, hey man, look at Maslow's triangle. Sex is on the bottom. They're not talking about intimacy. They're not talking about sex with somebody. They're talking about release. They're talking about sexual release. You know, like orgasms. You can whack off and do that. You know what I mean? And the fourth thing they ignore is matching, okay? Matching and appearance, right? Now, this has been, it's been, it's been explored, okay? Especially over the last five or so years, okay? Like when you first heard about PUAism, they were like, yo, man, looks don't matter. They just don't, okay? It's all game. It's all technique. And I think they wisened up. I think they smarter. They 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 got smart to that. And they said, hey man, like a lot of the guys who we have as clients, they're really ugly. So now we need to see now, now we need to make them less ugly, but we still need to preach the looks don't matter thing. Truth of the matter is, you're gonna get a chick who is just as attractive as you are. Look at me. I'm slightly shorter than average, like five foot eight. I'm a little bit, I'm, I'm like probably 30 or so pounds overweight. You know, I don't have the best living situation. I don't have the best job. So my status is kind of fucked. The money, I don't have a lot of money. You know what I mean? Can I really expect to get a dime piece chick? No, <laughs> I'd be a dumbass. I'd be so fucking stupid. To, to to even entertain that, okay? Now, does it randomly happen? Absolutely. It's happened to me randomly a few times, okay? But I don't rely on that, okay? I don't rely on it. It's way different. And dating is way different in your 20s and in your 30s. Yes, in your 20s or even in your, well, we'll say in your uh, late teens or even... Okay, teens to twenty, up until twenty-five. Up until twenty-five, it's 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 free. For, it's a free for all. It really is. Okay, but you still need to understand that if you look a certain way, chicks are gonna judge you by those looks as well. Okay, it's not the chick. Chicks like do not. Chicks don't like look at some dude who has like a really you know kind of pudgy body like myself. And they go, wow, man, that guy's got, you know, that guy, that guy looks all right. No, no, no. They don't say that to them. They say that to the guy who has the freaking eight pack abs and his shoulders are like basketballs and like, and his chest looks like a fucking ass. You know what I mean? Like, and like, let's see what else. Uh, and, and his, and his, and his face is completely chiseled. What the fuck is this? Someone's calling me. I don't know who the hell it is. 
Sorry. Let me hang up on him. Keep getting calls. Oh. All right. Let's see. I don't know why I answered him. Whatever. Fuck it. Anyways. Sorry. So. What was going to? Oh yeah. Uh, appearance matching. Right. Guy who has the abs. Guy who has like the the, the body. He has a chiseled ass face. You know, like he can grow a full head of hair like me. That kind of stuff. You know, they're gonna be the ones who get with the one the the chicks who look like them, who are their counterparts. Those are the dime pieces. Those are the chicks who like they take bartender jobs at fucking. At, at bars and clubs, and they get hit on by fucking dudes who are their fucking father's age. Okay? You know, so if, if you're like me, and you are not traditionally attractive, and you get with traditionally unattractive chicks, and you feel bad for it, why? You're getting with who you are. Now, if you want to change that, then by God, change it. But don't go. But don't be like a P. But don't be like PUAs and be like, "Yo, man, well, there's a conspiracy against me because I'm getting, I'm trying to get with all these attractive chicks, and they're not trying to get with me." And the PUA says that looks don't matter, so now I'm gonna be mad at the world. What? Get with the chicks who look like you. If you don't, if you're not a good looking dude, you you won't get a good looking chick. It's how it is. It's how it is. It's nature. It is nature. And the fi okay, the final, final, final thing. I've been running my mouth for an hour, and I missed a couple phone calls, so I have to get my phone calls. P Pick up people don't understand, I guess. Okay, and this was something that just kind of happened, okay? This was something that happened within, like, we'll say five years of me discovering it. Okay, so as of currently, as of now, PUA people do not understand the difference between cold approaching and street harassment. They don't. Not now they don't. A, a decade ago, sure. A decade ago, okay. Now, what, what, are the, what, what are the street harassment videos that you see on the internet? A lot of them involve older guy, like my parents' age, you know, 40s, 50s, walking up to chicks who are half the fucking age. And these dudes are, ex are, are like, expect to hook up with said chicks. Hello? What? Are you kidding me? And these dudes look like fucking trash. They look like garbage, okay? They look like they're fucking homeless. Alright. No hate to homeless people, but yeah, but they look but dudes who are like doing this cold approaching bullshit who are like my parents' age or twice my age, whatever. They're fucking stupid. Okay? They're dumb. Alright. The same with dudes who like okay, alright. This and I blame RSD for this. This I blame RSD on. Because this is a creation of RSD. There is a there is a, uh, a a form of ice breaking that they developed called called it's, it's called it's called look okay, about like five or six years ago they called it the claw, and they like the way they taught it is they'd be like yo man. All I gotta do to all I gotta do to do an icebreaker is just walk up to a chick and like put your arm around them. Yeah. Ew. Fuck that. That's just that that's not cool. That's all cool on either side. I wouldn't like it if a chick did that to me because I don't know what the fuck she's gonna do to me. And I wouldn't like it if I was a chick and some dude did that to me because I don't know what the fuck he's gonna do to me. Okay? That to me is fucking harassment. On any front, it's harassment. Okay? And then they did a thing called the, uh... 
what's it called, like the shock and awe, where you just walk up to a chick and you ask her if you want to have sex. Who comes up with this shit? Like, the people I read about a decade ago, like the Mysteries, the David D'Angelo's, even the Ross Jeffries of the world, they didn't come up with it. They said, hey man, just have a conversation first, and then you can make the fucking moves. Not make the moves, then have the conversation. So, I don't understand where Aristy was going with that. And I saw this happen in their videos, and I saw them preaching this in their videos. Fucking stupid. And then they would qualify it being, being like, oh, well, you're not as seasoned as us, so you can't do that. But here it is, just to show you what's possible. And that, to see, and, and the pick up people who I read about a decade ago, RSD included, meaning RSD has gotten worse over the years, in my opinion. They never preached that. They always preached just like, it's like, first, the chick is attracted to the dude, then the dude is attracted to the chick, which means you gotta, which means you gotta win her over in some capacity, and then she's gotta win you over in some capacity, and then you have a conversation where you just chat about shit, and then you, and then, and then, and then you have, then you have sex, or do whatever else that you want to do that is intimate, and there you go. But it seems now that pick up people just want to skip. The conversation, you want to skip the attraction, and they just, they just freaking go straight to the fucking intimacy. They go straight to the sex. They go, oh, just make a move as soon as you see the chick. Why? And then even better, do it when she's drunk, when she doesn't have any inhibitions. That is the stupidest thing in the world. Have I done it? Yes. It's stupid. I've tried it. It's dumb. It, there's no substance in it. I'd rather, okay, and I, nowadays I do shit online dating because the chicks on online dating are way more mature than any chick you'll find out in a club or a bar, okay? That's just how it is. All right. But if I were to go to a bar or a club and I were to go to see if I could take a chick to have, hang out with, uh, either that night or later on that week or whatever. At the, the last thing I would do was to be like walk up to her and give her and like put my arm around her. Unless I knew her or unless I got some kind of sign saying that I could do it. Like some kind of eye contact. You know what I mean? But that's different. It's different than just randomly doing it. You know, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like in a... It's kind of like in a book or in some other work of fiction or nonfiction. Uh, you know, you, you put a cuss word because you think it's going to enhance the effect. It usually, for the most part, it's just a cuss word for the sake of it being a fucking cuss word. You know what I mean? That kind of stuff like that. But, you know, it's just me. And the very, and the very final thing that, P, that PUA-ism of, uh, doesn't address, online dating. That is the new thing now, okay? That is a new thing now, like, for the last, we'll say, year and a half, I all the all the chicks who I've gone out with and dated, and have had and have, and have hooked up with, I've met them all online. Why? Because it's so easy. You just meet. And you know, the chick will have a nice profile. You read all about her, and then you chat with her, whatever, and then there you go. And yes, you do. There is some kind of there is some kind of semblance of being catfished. I mean, that will happen, but I've never gotten catfished ever. You know, I've never been, I've never gotten catfished ever, and I've been on online dating for a little over two years. I've accumulated probably twenty five dates off of it, and I'm not even traditionally attractive. And these chicks who I go out with, some of them are traditionally attractive, some of them aren't. It's like a it's a fifty fifty kind of deal. You know what I mean? And that's what PUAism, they don't understand that. They're, they're too antiquated for that. They still want you to go and talk to drunken party college girls at the club. 
you know, so you can have some stupid hookup, so you can have some dumbass hookup sex with them, and then you know, either she regrets it and pre- and and files a rape charge against you, or you just kind of go home and be like, okay, that had no meaning. I'm not gonna do this with her again. What the fuck? Anyways, so that's my little video on PUA ism. Hope you guys liked it. Hope you guys liked listening to it. Uh, I gotta get back to my phone. I gotta hit up some people who have hit me up during this video. And I will catch you later. Oh, and read slash watch uh, Strength by Sonny. He's a good dude. Uh, and that's about it. And Spot and Casanova, too. He's, he's pretty legit, too. I'll put both of their channels in the description. Later's. Peace.